Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. This week here in the UK, we have witnessed devastating flooding and wind damage from Storm Babette, which tracked northwards and stalled across Scotland. Red warnings have been issued and a further red warning for Saturday. So we're talking to you Friday lunchtime and Thursday night, the rain really intensified as severe gales brought gusts up to 70 miles an hour. Feeling the brunt of the storm was eastern Scotland with the sheer volume of water, the ferocity of the storm causing multiple hazards, widespread disruption and damage. So the focal point of the storm covered much of southeast Grampian. So namely Stonehaven, southwards uh, to Perth, it's that zone there. And the focal point within that red zone was Brecon, where two rivers are serviced by this small village and they've seen a lot of flooding like basically this flood waters have just kept on rising so people have been trapped upstairs roads have become rivers terrifying waves crashing over seawalls and rivers bursting their banks and water just flooding everywhere now as we speak rescue efforts continue the heavy rain and further flooding is likely and it's not just across eastern scotland there are numerous warnings across much of the uk and we have seen flooding further south through friday across Northern England, as well as the Midlands. So this situation isn't going away and it's going to continue for the next 24 hours. So today I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, Alex and Aidan, just to discuss this, add some value and detail, some context and some clarity. So let's just get stuck in, Alex. First of all, how did this evolve? Uh, interesting one, actually, because it, it wasn't your classic storm that brewed up out in the Atlantic and really intensified just to the west of us and, and then hit us with very strong wind. This has been brewing for a while and um, actually down to the southwest and came in up from the Bay of Biscay and quite slow moving. And that's been one of the problems with it. So, yes, the winds have caused some issues, uh, some serious issues, but, but the rain has been the bigger focus with this. And part of that is because it's become quite slow moving. So it's been pushed along. Uh, the jet's been in a bit of a mess. There's been amplification up to the north. We've had quite a strong jet coming out of eastern Canada to the south. And it's not really interacted with this low. It's just kind of meandered its way northwards, picked up a lot of moisture from the Bay of Biscay. And it's bumping up against a big area of high pressure in Scandinavia. So the Scandinavian high has been building at the same time that this low has been heading northwards. And that's created, it's concertina and everything up, really. That's generated these winds feeding in the moisture from the east, from the North Sea. And that's not a usual wind direction for us. We get it sometimes, but it's not the typical wind direction. Obviously, that's normally west or west to southwest. So it's easterly winds combining with slow moving weather systems just generated an awful lot of rainfall. Uh, we've seen, you know, a month's worth, more, well over a month's worth in, in a day in some locations. So that's that's where the storm has come from down to the southwest. So, Aidan, this situation actually started. We saw the, the beginnings of the rain arrive across more southern areas on Wednesday. Were we forewarned? Yeah, it was when we came in on Monday that there was this increasing signal for an exceptional rainfall event across eastern Scotland in particular, as well as other parts of the UK. And that's when we decided to name it because of the serious impacts we were looking at for the end of the week. Now, at that time, we issued yellow warnings because Met Office weather warnings are issued based on a combination of impacts from the weather, but also the likelihood of those impacts occurring. Now, Monday was three days before the rains were really going to set in across eastern Scotland. And so at that point, with some inconsistencies between the computer models, the likelihood was a bit lower. But we were looking at rainfall totals of 200 millimetres plus, which would deliver high impacts. And... On Tuesday, as there was a bit more consistency with the models and confidence increased in terms of those higher impacts, then we upgraded to amber warnings. And on Wednesday, the red warning was issued for parts of Angus, Aberdeenshire into Tayside. And so as the week has gone on, the likelihood of those impacts resulting from 200 millimetres over a few days in some parts of eastern Scotland that don't typically see that much rainfall in a whole month of October, well, that's when we started escalating the warnings day by day. A red warning 48 hours before the event in itself is quite rare, Alex. Yeah, we don't issue red warnings lightly. We don't issue them very often. They, they are rare. We issue what, two, two in a year would be would be pretty unusual. Um, I think there's been four in the last five years, I think, something like that, uh, covering a, a wide range of, of, of weather um, 
events. The the last was the most recent red warning was for the heat, the extreme heat in July 2022. So yeah, we don't issue them often. We don't issue them lightly. We only issue them when there is a serious threat to life. And that comes from torrential rain, uh, a month's worth of rain falling in a couple of days. This is not usual. Um, it's more typical for Western Scotland to see rain. The winds come in generally from the west, but this is easterly winds generating the winds on the eastern side. So that's why we're seeing a month's worth, more than a month's worth falling in a day or so. That's why we've seen those issues. Uh, I say red warnings are, are very serious indeed. We only issue them when, when there is a threat to life. So we, we, we take it very seriously when we issue them. We know what that means. And that's why this situation is so very serious. I mean, if I heard that there was a red warning where I live, I don't know how I would actually prepare for it. Obviously, listening out to the forecast, wonder when the rain's going to hit. What do I do at home? Do I evacuate? Do I listen to local authorities? You know, there are so many questions that must be going through people's minds when they think that their house could be underwater imminently. Aidan, what are your thoughts on that? When we issue a red warning, what are we actually telling people? What are we telling them to do? Well, a red warning means that there's this high likelihood of severe impacts from the weather. And that means if you're in a red warning area, it's highly likely that you'll see uh, widespread and serious flooding. And so your home or your business might be at risk from flooding. And the best advice is to, first of all, keep up to date with the forecasts and warnings from the Met Office, stay up to date with all the information and the warnings coming out of SEPA, uh, uh, if you're in Scotland or the Environment Agency in England, Natural Resources Wales, for example, and make preparations for flooding if your home is at risk. So moving anything at risk of losing from the ground floor and pay close attention to advice from the local authorities and from emergency services in case they tell you you need to evacuate and of course keep your phone charged so that you can stay in touch with people even if the power cuts off we've seen with with this flooding event thousands of homes lose power on thursday night and uh, further advice obviously is to not venture out into flood affected areas you know to stay away from fast flowing flood water in particular don't travel unless you're told to evacuate. Yeah, that's all good advice um, uh, based around a, a sense of maybe a frenzied fear because you don't experience this every day. It's it's a once in a lifetime experience. I don't know. It, it's, it's something which I think that, uh, you know, there, there are people now who did not leave their homes and are being airlifted to safety. And the other advice is do not travel because roads are going to be full of water, deep water at that. Obviously, there are cancellations right now right across eastern and northern Scotland. Um, in a moment, Aidan, I'm going to come back to you to talk about the, the volume of rain and in context to other events. But Alex, why eastern Scotland? Why has it happened here? Well, that's because of the, the orientation of this low pressure, this storm system, storm, storm Babette, where it came from. It came up from the southwest uh, and it came up slowly but surely and bumped up against high pressure across Scandinavia. So the two things just kind of combined, it all kind of squeezed together. And we talk about a squeeze in the ice bars and, and that generated these strong winds. So the winds have been coming in from the east, slightly south of east, but just bringing in the moisture. So if you think about the orientation of, of eastern Scotland, where all the mountains are, they kind of face that southeastward way. So they're just facing these winds that are bringing the moisture with them. They, the winds bring the moisture, it rises up the hills and it, it rains down in that part of the world. So it, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the perfect storm, if you like, it's the, it, it, for that eastern Scotland location, just because of the way the winds are, the way they've been strengthening and the way that storm has become very slow moving and introduced that moisture. But other parts have also been affecting their parts of northeast England as well. And again, it's that same same reason the Pennines, most of the rain falls on the west of the Pennines, uh, whereas, you know, the east is often in the rain shadow. But we are seeing the opposite in this because the rain, the winds are coming in from the east. And that's why to the east, we're seeing the, the heaviest rainfall. So that's why it's unusual, but particularly for parts of eastern Scotland, because that's where the weather fronts uh, and from Storm Babette have kind of just ground to a halt. So let's now talk about how much rainfall there has been relative to a recent rainfall event, which in itself made headlines. Yeah, and this is the truly staggering thing, really. It's less than two weeks since we saw serious flooding widely across the southern and central highlands. And that was the weekend of the 6th and 7th of October. Now, much of the UK saw warm and dry weather that weekend with high pressure to the south 
and westerly airflow. But that westerly airflow also brought persistent and heavy rain across central and northern Scotland. The heaviest rain in that event was over western areas and central areas with 75 to 100 millimetres across the swathe of the southern and central highlands. There was more than 150 millimetres in some of the wettest areas. And even in the east, so that area where we've seen the exceptional rain over the last 24 hours or more, we saw 70 to 80 millimetres that weekend, which again is, is a high rainfall amount, even if it's not quite as high as we've seen this week. So the rivers have been full, the ground has been wet. And that period, the 6th to the 7th of October, was the wettest two-day period on record for Scotland. In terms of the rainfall for this event up to the time of recording, so from Thursday morning up to uh, Friday afternoon, we've seen widely across parts of Angus, Aberdeenshire, Tayside, uh, Dundee, we've seen more than 100 millimetres and in some of the wetter spots more than 160 millimetres. That falling in around 24 hours or so is extraordinary because that would be more than a month's worth of rainfall, more than the average rainfall those areas get in October, falling in 24 hours or so. And more is expected heading into the weekend, another pulse of very heavy rain during Saturday. OK, so the warnings are continually updated on our website, but also on our social media feeds. So take a look at those and they will always give you the, the latest information of the warnings, where they are, when they go out to uh, and what the impacts are likely to be. Uh, so let's just take a look at the bigger picture now, or the broader outlook across the UK, because this morning there were images coming through across some parts of England where we saw surface water flooding, some schools were closed, and there were obviously amber warnings in force through today and into tomorrow. So Alex, just give us a bit more of a flavour of what's going on elsewhere, away from that sort of that intense zone of, of red warning. Well, actually, the rain overnight, or first thing this morning, started to ease across eastern Scotland. So it's, it's a drier day Friday in eastern Scotland. Uh, but that rain, sadly, as has been discussed, will come back tonight. That's why we have the new red warning in force from midnight. But further south, the rain hasn't been easing. It's been continuing, and if anything, getting heavier. Parts of northeast England, little swirl has been bringing heavy rain over the Midlands and parts of Wales. We've seen flooding on the, the rail line between Bristol and Birmingham. Uh, even down here, where, where uh, Aidan and I are in Exeter, uh, there was there was you know coastal flooding yesterday, huge waves along the coastal strip uh, that we've seen footage from. So that was that was yesterday, maybe even been Wednesday actually. We saw some some flooding in this part of the world in the south, but it's been slowly moving north. So impacts across Wales, impacts across the Midlands, and during Friday afternoon, it's northeastern parts of England really that are going to see the the heaviest rain. The good news here is that is that after today, it does look a little drier. I mean, there'll still be some wet weather around, but but the the main focus for Saturday does return back to that eastern Scotland area, whereas England and Wales and Northern Ireland, although not completely dry, will be drier. But there is cause for concern and there are warnings in place for this afternoon, for, for Friday afternoon and into the nighttime period for much of England and Wales. And we're talking wind and rain here. Yes, I think the the winds particularly strong in the east, so that eastern coastal strip where there's the, the the possibility of large waves causing some causing some issues, but also parts of Cumbria as well could see some gustiness with the mountains having an impact there. And again, those easterly, the fact that the winds coming in from the east bouncing over the Pennines and then causes some strong gusts, and the same goes for the, the Cumbrian fells as well. So there could be some issues with the wind. Uh, and yeah, check the Met Office website and uh, app for the latest on the warnings. Constructing the messaging around um, Storm Babette has been really important and one of our main focal points here at the Met Office to make sure as many people as possible know what's going on so they can make informed decisions and obviously collaborating and partnering with um, SEPA as well as the Environment Agency. Um, and that's where we get we're getting some of our data from, Aidan, because, you know, the where the rain has been falling most, there are fewer rain gauges. Yeah, there are certainly fewer Met Office official rain gauges. So we use the SEPA rain gauges, which um, they quality control them after the event. And so a lot of the data that we're quoting at the moment is, of course, provisional. But it gives us this impression of how much rainfall is falling and gives us that hour by hour update in terms of that amount of rain and the impacts that we are seeing 
coming out of eastern Scotland. And, you know, that close relationship between the Met Office and SEPA or in England, the Environment Agency and in Wales, Natural Resource Wales and so on, that is so important to figure out in terms of our rainfall forecasts, what that would mean and, you know, how much the rivers would rise, what kinds of impacts we can expect. So it's the combined expertise between these organisations that is crucial in forecasting and warning about an event like this. And future proofing um, our homes, properties for another event like that, just to understand the distribution of the rain, the intensity and the impacts, because they don't happen very often. And we need to learn from this. And adaptation is really one of the most important things that we should be doing. With, and this comes on to my final question, really, climate change. Now, after the event, I'm sure climate scientists are going to be conducting analysis on this event to locate the climate change fingerprint. But it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it's obvious that a warmer atmosphere holds more moisture. So what we are seeing is every one degree rise in the global temperature adds 7% extra moisture into the global atmosphere. So that inevitably leads to more rainfall on average, yes, but also more rainfall when it rains, heavier rain when it rains. And although it would take a, a, a scientific study after this event to attribute climate change and to see how much more likely it is or it has been because of climate change, we know from looking at past observations that the number of days in which we've seen 50 millimetres or more in the UK of rainfall in October, November and December have increased during the last few decades. And we are expecting, as the world continues to warm, more of those days in the future 50 millimeters of rain plus in the final three months of the year and the last time a red warning alex was issued for scotland for rain was a few years ago and that was storm desmond and an attribution study was conducted after that event yeah it was back in 2015 i think was it um and yeah, the attribution study on that concluded it was 60% more likely uh, because of climate change, because of our changing climate to, to, to bring that those kind of rainfall. So that's the kind of ballpark that we'll probably be looking at. But obviously, each storm is different and the, um, the attribution study will be will be focused on on this event and will be probably out quite quickly actually because we have now have a rapid attribution uh, team here at the Met Office who who deal with this kind of thing uh, and we're we're able you know back in 2015 attribution studies were, were quite new whereas now we're you know we're a bit more used to them and we're, we're getting better at them so this will be out it'll be out faster and we'll be able to as, as you say locate that locate that fingerprint of climate change and put numbers to it. It will be interesting to see how much the warm seas have contributed as well if they're able to isolate that because of course Babette came from a region in which sea surface temperatures are well above average and so that would inevitably lead to more evaporation and high humidity in the source region and and that would be then carried with Babette as it moved across the UK. Well thank you very much Alex and Aidan. Obviously the Met Office feed continues on all our social media channels so you'll get the latest forecast and on our Twitter feed, as well as our Instagram, lots of information there, as well as our Met Office website. So stay up to date with the forecast. Obviously, you know, if you're living in Scotland under that red warning, SEPA is your, your first port of call as well and local authorities. So take care. Our thoughts are with everyone who has been impacted by this event so far. And we'll be back next week uh, with another weather snap. Another great weather snap, Claire. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Then you catch all of our daily weathers on YouTube as well. And if podcasts are your thing, check out our Met Office podcast channel. Lots of information, lots of stories there. And we'll see you again next week.